it's been probably the best like experience I've had as, as a band. Yeah. Because it's been so fun, like getting drunk, like playing gigs. Yeah. Like and to see loads of mates and stuff. Like it's playing to new people as well. Yeah. I also yeah. feel like the music scene is like, a lot better for like bands like us. It's an indie flex. <laughs> So today on It's an Indie Flex, we have Rick. In hello. front of me, we have Marlon and Ed. Say hello, boys. Hello. You all right? Lovely. How are you doing today? We're doing good. Very excited. Great day. Have a podcast and straight to Liam Gallagher after this. So I want to know, and I think a lot of other people also want to know, but I say a lot of other people, but you know, I only know four or Everyone. five. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone wants to know what you were going for when you decided to be called Rick. We met at a party. The guy who had the party was called Rick, and we just like, fuck it, we'll call it that. Easy to remember. Recently, you guys just went on what, four date tour, maybe six, because we had a, we had another London show. Yeah. There for the home fans, <laughs> we, the, we the phenomenal demand. We just had to add another London date. We got, oh, we yeah, got we Birmingham got, tomorrow. We got Birmingham tomorrow. Just yeah. Last date of our tour. It's been probably the best like experience I've had as, as a band, going up north, getting drunk, like playing gigs. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I also yeah. feel like the music scene is a lot better up north for like bands like us. I feel like people just go to music up there. There's so many music venues in London which are just like empty. empty. Like we play gigs in London which are completely empty, literally like to no one. Yeah, but like we didn't really have any empty shows up north. Like they were literally like quite busy. Yeah, yeah. new places, meeting new people. There's a lot of gigs for like industry people as well, and I feel like going up north just meet loads of new people who kind of get, who get into your music. So many venues in London as so, well. So it's very like saturated with venues and then there's less people at each venue. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you go to somewhere like Newcastle and there's only like a handful of like good venues to go to. So mm. like they're all busy. busy yeah. yeah. Nice. What date of the tour was your favourite so far? Our uh, London one was sick. Because yeah. that was like busy, full of all our mates, like it was good. For us as a band, probably Manchester. Mm. Yeah. That was a big two hundred person. Yeah, it was one, a right? proper yeah, big that big was a- that was a massive. And that, that was our headline one. That was really good. Yeah, and that, that was just was, like yeah, that was like a proper like headline one for us. So like everyone was there for us. No one was like, oh, the band from London. Like who cares? Yeah. Mm. But like to try and win them over, and the people there weren't necessarily for us. But like there's a lot of people there. But we had to kind of win them over. Yeah. Mm. Great night out in Newcastle as well. <laughs> so what would you say you've learned the most from your tour, or what's what's been the the most useful bit of information you've taken from this? Like when people don't know your music. You can't really have those like you can't really act like you're playing reading or something and have all those like anthemic parts where it's like you just gotta like be quick play the songs and then just bang through your set yeah you don't want to bore people because they have no clue like who you are you just want to like be we kind of realize we just got to be more intense like just play through the songs like mm. that's probably the biggest thing just make your set interesting how did you do that we had these little like like long build-ups and stuff which just like if you're playing like a headline show at some festival that's brilliant because like hypes up the crowd but if you're playing to a bunch of random people they they don't know what... mm. and it's like full power as well yeah. go on go cra- like go literally as crazy as you can and just try like just just, just try and like you know win win the crowd over as much as you can in the time you have yeah yourself. we literally completely diy we just emailed like like loads of venues asking like, to play yeah. should have like hundreds of emails to like every yeah. venue around the country we kind of learned like you can't really get disheartened from not people from people not replying like you've got to yeah. keep going because mm. reality they, they 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 just don't reply like they're not think they don't care about you. they just don't care like, yeah no one replies yeah like literally. that's just a normal thing but we just keep emailing them like keep them updated yeah. with what you're doing because then people reply. read them but they just yeah, won't reply exactly. but they're still reading them if you've got a contact to like a manager or a label just like I think what we do is like we just keep emailing them, telling them what we're doing, yeah, <laughs> saying, oh, we, so we're going on tour now, we're like releasing this single, we're like listen to it, we like just done this, book that festival or something, just like keep them updated, keep them in the loop. And then mm. you, that one day they just might reply and be like, oh, do you want to meet up? Because I've seen you're doing this tour or a gig or a festival or a song. And then they'll be like, wow. Yeah, that's, that's the plan for us anyway. Just yeah. keep everyone updated. Yeah. Should we listen to one of your songs? Definitely. Cool. I'd love to. What do we have? What do we have? Where am I going? Yeah, this is a subjunctive, it's a banger.
trains go by Wasting all my precious time Pushing everything from my I like to say I'm unproductive Everything in the subjunctive All that I can hope for If you won't see me again If you won't see me again Earworm that is subjunctive. <laughs> you were just saying about your long build ups. I heard we plenty were. of those in there. Do you often find it difficult to work out when it's appropriate to use that musical idea? When we first started doing like gigs, we did a, like a sold out show at um, O2 Academy Islington. Mm-hmm. We had like loads of people there and we were writing these songs just before it to get them done and so we could basically have mosh bits. Mm-hmm. So we'd be basically like, doing these build ups, basically, people keep moshing. Yeah. And I guess we're kind of like, just kind of immaturity like back then. Like as, yeah. I mean, the songs are quite we, old. All we cared about was like which is more these from mosh and stuff. Yeah, we we, we just wanted people to like mosh and just like, have a great time listening to us. So we're, just, we're also inspired by like rappers and stuff. The how they get the crowd going. Yeah, we kind of we like that. We look at that and think how how can we put that into rock music? So we can't we can't be ignorant to other genres and what they're doing now. There's a guy who came to. Uh, Kingston the other day so he was um, one of the guys who made Baby Shark as big as it is mm-hmm. one thing he said to us well not like in just impartial conversation he said he gets really pissed off when he goes to goes to a set and the band don't even have a banner how on earth can a band play a gig without a banner very true so, we don't have a banner yeah, yeah you got, got to get on the banners I mean yeah. we, we, we have an England flag which we spray painted <laughs> we, we spray painted that's your Rick, band we spray, we spray painted Rick over it it's a bit, it's but a bit it just looks a bit EDL yeah. so yeah. Like, I don't think we could really <laughs> yeah, I don't put it up that one at gigs just having like England banner behind <laughs> us I think eventually but, eventually uh, we will invest we, we do one. need to get yeah. one it's yeah. just all our money and time we got stickers Oh yeah, we've stickers got, are great. Fam. We've got QR stickers, so, so you can them. scan them for Instagram, for, and it goes to our Instagram. Yeah, yeah. but they're good. Yeah, you got any more, more um, interesting promotional ideas? We had we had a couple ideas about the tour. When yeah. we were doing a tour video, we were gonna um, get like old like kind of like fans and of people saying how good they were. Oh yeah, we we were gonna get like interviews of like fans like talking about like Oasis or something, and be like, oh they're I just fucking love them, oh they're amazing, <laughs> and then like. It's it, so it's like they're saying it about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we, we, we have to have clips of like girls saying, Oh, they're just so fit. And like, <laughs> we're just gonna put something like that on it. And like, yeah. how they're like the greatest band of our generation. <laughs> so we're just gonna like I fake mean, it and make it look fair, like I think it was us. We, we kind of made it and thought it was a bit, bit, bit much, but it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird, yeah, but like, I don't know. <laughs> so you were talking about doing some like uh, live acoustic versions of your music. Do you find that that's quite a helpful thing to do? We kind of, re- yeah, we kind of realized on. It, we, it worked really well on one song we did and then it didn't really work that well on another yeah. and on another it didn't work at all. So yeah. it kind of yeah. depends on the song. But Where you can do it, that's a sign of a good song. Because you break it down to what you got chord, you got yeah. guitar chords, you got vo- lyrics. Yeah. If you can do it with just those two, then that is a good song. If you can't, then does that not mean that there needs to be some sort of rewriting involved? Kind of. I, I mean, w- obviously that, that's a difficult thing to say, but... Yeah. For us, maybe not. It's like you couldn't really do an acoustic version of The Hunter by Slaves or something. Yeah. That's a proper like punk tune. Like we, we, we have this funky song which we kind of tried to do an acoustic version of and didn't it, suit it. it just didn't yeah. suit acoustic mm. kind of stuff. So I don't know. To be honest. I don't think that idea. Yeah. Right. Second song. This one's Juliet. Yeah, it's a tune. That night the feeling It felt so right Even though I'd never Seen your face in the light Upon my shoulder 
Guys are, I guess. Quite an old song with all our stuff. Kind of an experimental phase of Rick. Trying to find what genre we properly are. I think we found that now. So the future songs we put out are gonna be a lot more uniform. So if someone said to you, what is Rick in you know, less than fifty words? What is Rick? <sighs> <laughs> Sorry. You're like, the, the dirtiness fun. of like Queens of the Stone Age, like the heaviness of that, with like the punk grit to it. Yeah. With the like melodies and kind of lyrical themes of like more like British bands like Libertines, Arctic Monkeys, that kind of. Yeah, I can hear Arctic Monkeys at the in the start of subjunctive subject. Yeah. That was uh, I thought that was pretty Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. The, the guitar over the top of that. Yeah, I mean, quite a lot of people say that, but I, I don't want to. That's hard though, because like, as an indie band. Everyone says you're stroked Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. They're kind of like defining for the scene. Yeah. So yeah. people would say that shit. It doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, I mean, everyone sounds like Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, because yeah. they are indie rock. Yeah. It's quite a good thing as well, in a way. Like, yeah, yeah. If they're the it's, champions it's, of it, yeah, then why would you yeah. not want to sound like them? But I guess but it's like, like, you don't want to we, we you don't be wanna be like, oh, you're, you're like Arctic Monkeys. You want to be your own thing. Upcoming music. Upcoming music. Talk to me about this. We have a... We're, we're, we're like recording a couple of singles in December. Yeah. Then I think we're recording a bunch of songs in December. Yeah, in December we're doing two, just to like test, basically oh, yeah, test yeah, the yeah, waters yeah. a bit. And then... Uh, then January, and then I think January we're going to do like, like 10, yeah, many something like that. as we can. We have, we're going to try and book like a week out. Songs. We're going to try and book like a week out to just record every single day, basically. Oh, nice. Like 10, 10, 12 songs done. <sighs> then we just have the, the next year sorted of releases. Yeah, I mean, that I sounds think we're, good. We're going to aim for an EP. Like March, probably April. I feel like no, literally everyone does singles now. Like I got, if I see a band at a festival and, I, and then I go try and listen to them and they've only got like three singles out, I can, I can get into them, but I couldn't properly become a fan. Whereas like if we play a few festivals in the summer and people go to us and we have like five song EP or something, then they can like listen to it. It kind of becomes a whole story. Like, like you get the theme of the band. Like it become. Let's listen to third and final track. Where are we going? Uh, Fool's grin, I fool's grin. Something in your etiquette that I haven't got used to, so I try that hard to distinguish what matters to you the most. I get the feeling that sometimes you, you just don't give a toss. Cause I'm pretending that we've made those mistakes on the basis we have that trust. Now it's you. Again, you got no idea what's wrong. Keeping that fool's grin of yours, the one that you show. Now please just mind your P's and Q's. I know it's easy to be rude. I can't stand you anymore. I hope you know. Is it a bit of that jealousy that I just can't recognize? A bit of my uncertainty that's hidden in my disguise I get a feeling that sometimes you, you just don't give a toss Cause I'm pretending that we've made those mistakes On the basis we have that trust Now it's you, again you got no idea what's wrong Keeping that fool's grin of yours that please just mind your P's and Q's I know it's easy to be rude I can't stand you anymore I hope you know I said I hope you know So, Fool's Grin 
it's most commercial, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, but that's a good thing. That's good. Yeah, thing. Yeah. It's most I accessible. Yeah. yeah I Obviously, commercial is a bit of a dirty word, isn't it? I mean, uh, commercial. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, no, yeah. it's very like easy to listen to. Yeah. I yeah. think for like anyone from any genre, like loads of people we met, like from like the rap industry, so yeah, they, they, they can they love that with one. it. Yeah, they, so. they love that one. What would you say is the worst part about being in a band? Like, what do you think? I just wish we didn't have to do that one thing you after do. a gig. Oh. Yeah, so it's a good annoying. one. <laughs> Basically, after a gig, get, if we get so so, we spend you know we spend like a month getting two months getting everyone we know to come to the gig, then having something to do after the gig. So you play the gig, goes really well, whatever. Get off stage, then pack up, to go somewhere. And then and at it's least so hard. we have like we have like sixty people following us. Be like, oh, we're going to a club then. What are we doing? Or like when we played Not Here Arts Club a couple like months ago, we had like literally like a hundred people just walk around Lapid Grove or like Not Here at night. <laughs> It's a bit like, we, we, we had like a tells on us, like we, we, wanted, we wanted to go to the pub or something, but everyone's yeah. like, oh, let's go out clubbing. And I guess it's better now with people go to uni and stuff. And especially with how we're kind of building more of a fan base, people are less yeah. inclined to be like, oh, let's go out with you afterwards. But I do love being in a band though. Yeah, like obviously. But if, if, I, I, if I wasn't in a band, I, I don't know, like- I'll, I'll be playing FIFA at home. Oh yeah, I'd literally be so bored. Like <laughs> I, the second, I'm literally with these like, every day. When we finish like the, the kind of first leg of the tour, We've been together for like a week and we got back and I was just like so depressed. I was like, yeah. what, what am I meant to do with my life now? Yeah. <laughs> like going back to college. It felt like, like after a festival and you're literally yeah. like, well, yeah. life is we, we actually wrote a song about that. <laughs> yeah, we had to. We had to. Yeah, we had to. Like, yeah. <laughs> Rick, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you very much for having us. I think you've uh, shared a lot of useful information that I think somebody is going to make use of. So thank Hopefully. you. Remember. Rick, oh, absolutely nothing. We do it as much as we For can. now, but soon to be. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, boys. Cheers, thank Cheers. you. Thank you, Joe. It's an empty space. <laughs>